there folks welcome back to rule of thumb so today um, we're going to do turkey sausage now although this may not immediately come to mind as a Thanksgiving item um, the reason why I decided to include this is a lot of people don't have Thanksgiving dinner or don't have the opportunity to have Thanksgiving dinner or sometimes we'll have a second gathering for friends and family that turns out to be brunch or breakfast. So I thought this would be a good way for you to make that a little bit more special by making your own sausage if you'd like. So that's why I decided to include this. Um, as you can see, I have my fancy button down shirt on today. I have one very persistent negative commenter that does not like the fact that I wear a t-shirt when I film my videos. Now, I don't know about you folks, but I don't typically get dressed up to cook in my own kitchen. But I thought I'm going to throw them a bone and put on a, a button-down shirt. This is actually, a button-down shirt and jeans is actually my kind of standard, uh, standard dress in life um, when I'm not at work. And even when I am at work, it's really just a button-down shirt that has a logo on it. <laughs> so... Um, when I get home, I typically put on my home uniform, which is usually a white t-shirt and shorts, and that's how I operate. But I just thought I'd throw that out there for you folks. Um, so what I am going to do is I'm going to get all the ingredients together. Now I'm making a big batch today, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through the ingredients with you and how I put it together, but in the description box below, I'm going to put the recipe for a smaller batch that makes just three pounds. Um, because that's a little bit more manageable for most people. Um, but I, you know, I was making a big batch, so I thought I'd bring you along for that. So, I'm going to get everything together, um, and I'll bring you back when I'm ready to move on to the next step. Okay, folks, we're back. So, um, what I have here is I have, um, what's left of the last order of ground turkey that I got from Zacon before they disappeared. So I have 17 one-pound packages of ground turkey um, and then I have six cups uh, three of water and three of uh, neutral oil um, this seems like a lot of liquid and maybe seems like a lot of oil uh, but again I'm doing a giant batch and you do need to add fat in because turkey is so lean um, if you don't you wouldn't get uh, a good texture out of it so it is important to add the oil if you wanted to cut it back a little and try it that way, be my guest. If you want to add lard instead of oil, you could certainly try that. If you have pork fat and you want to add pork into it, you could do that. Um, there's lots of ways that you could change that up. Then I have the spice blend. Now, I'm going to consult my sheet here because there is a lot. So, um, salt and pepper. I would not use iodized salt or table salt. I would use a sea salt or a kosher salt um, or even the Himalayan pink salt. Um, I would definitely use uh, non-iodized salt. Uh, and then I have ground black pepper. Um, and I have basil, sage, red pepper flakes, marjoram, dried mustard, thyme, garlic, onion. I have sweet and smoked paprika oregano, and celery seed. Now, that's an intimidating list of spices. Um, there's no question about that. However, the vast majority, the, the vast majority of these, I would think, a lot of people probably have in their pantry. Um, and some of these you could go without. Um, for example, I use half and half uh, sweet and smoked paprika. I like that kind of little bit of smokiness in the background. If you just have regular paprika, use regular paprika. It'll be fine. Celery seed. This is an addition that I have in mind because I love the note that celery gives. Um, some people aren't huge fans of celery, and if you aren't, don't use it. Um, what else? Marjoram. I haven't made it without the marjoram, so I can't honestly tell you. Um, Marjoram's relatively easy to get. It's not expensive. You know, I hate to encourage somebody to go out and buy something that they're not going to use uh, for any other dish. Um, 
but maybe this is your, you know, challenge is to figure out other ways you can use it. I do use it in other poultry dishes when I'm cooking because I love marjoram with poultry. So my suggestion is to give it a try. Um, you know, red pepper flakes, you can go up or down on those depending on the heat that you want. Um, what else do I got on here? Yeah, I mean, everything else I think is pretty standard. So um, what I do is I put it all in um, my little blender and I blend it up so it's really fine. Um, so let me see if I can bring this up closer here for you folks. Um, you can see it's like a really fine spice blend. So what I'm going to do um, is I'm going to get this all mixed together. Now, because I'm doing, a again, a big giant batch, um, and if you are going to do a larger batch, what I suggest is doing it in stages. So I'll put a few pounds of turkey in my big giant pink bowl here, and I'll sprinkle some seasoning on it, pour a little bit of the liquid mixture on there, and get that mixed up. Then I'll add a little bit more turkey, and so on and so forth, until I get everything all mixed together. Um, and then I'll bring you back when we get to that point. Okay, folks, welcome back. I got everything mixed up here. You can see inside the bowl, I got a big giant sausage ball. So, now what I'm gonna do, um, I am gonna take some plastic wrap and put it down right on the surface of this. And then I'm gonna put my lid on the bowl and this is gonna go in the refrigerator. It needs to be refrigerated for at least 12 hours. I'm gonna leave mine overnight. I got work tomorrow. So it'll actually probably be in there for 36 hours maybe. Um, and then at that point, I'm actually going to can this. So I will bring you folks along for that. Now, if you are making this for yourself and you're gonna use it for a Thanksgiving brunch or something like that, after 12 hours, you can feel free to cook away. And you can cook it as crumbled sausage. You can form it into patties. You can form it into links. Um, if you are an experienced sausage maker and have a sausage stuffer, you could certainly put this into casings and make links out of it. Um, but for me, what I'm gonna do is, uh, as I said, I'm going to can it. So um, when I get to the point where I'm ready to do that, I'll bring you folks back and I'll show you what I do. Welcome back folks. We're on day two of turkey sausage. So this is where I left off with you and this is where we return. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to can this up. Now there is a couple different methods of how you could do this. Some people would take this and pack it in a jar raw um, and then can it and it, it will cook in the canner um, and it will certainly work fine. Um, that, however, is not my preferred method. Um, texturally, I don't like it that way. Um, I feel like it comes out um, without that kind of crumbly sausage texture that I want. Um, so for me, I, I don't like to pack it raw. Um, you could patty this up into sausages and give them a light sear on each side and then put the sausage patties into jars and can them that way. Uh, that's more work than what I'm interested in doing, quite frankly, and I want more versatility than just a sausage patty. So for me, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take all of this sausage and I am going to cook it on the stovetop. Um, and I'm not looking to cook it until it's like crispy and crunchy or, you know, really browned up to the point where there's not much left of it. All I'm doing is getting it just slightly cooked through so that it is crumbly, but, you know, there's still some room left to work with it when it comes out. So what I'm going to do is get this all cooked up and back into a different pink bowl. <laughs> and then I'll bring you back at that point so you can see what it looks like and then we'll move on to the next step of canning. Okay folks we're back so I've got all of the sausage cooked so you can see it's just 
It's nice and crumbly. It's exactly how you want it to. For me, this is how I want it to come out of the jar. So that's really the point I was trying to get it to is, you know, how I want it to come out of the jar when I'm ready to use it. So my next step is I'm going to get this divided up into my jars. Um, I'm going to use pint jars because that is the size that works best for the two of us. So I'll get this all divided up and then I will bring you back and show you what the next step is. Okay folks, welcome back. So I had a slight change of plans while I was gone. Um, I decided instead of just using regular pint jars, I had picked up a bunch of these jars um, at an estate sale and what they are is the Atlas mason jars and they were um, sold with spaghetti sauce in them so I don't know if you can can you see the writing on there so the jars are packed fairly tightly um, not so much that you know you can't get any more in there, but you know, firm enough that I felt like I got what I wanted in there. And then what I have here is just some hot turkey broth. I could actually use just, I mean, the tiniest more there. Okay, so you can see we're right at the bottom of that rim there. I have some vinegar over here in the bowl because this is meat and because there is some fat in it, we wanna make sure we really clean these rims. Now what I did is I, after I packed the meat in them, I went around and wiped them down good with um, some hot water and a washcloth to get the majority of it off. And now I'm going back with vinegar to make sure it's good and clear. And then we're going to get a lid on there and grab a ring and put a ring on there, fingertip tight, and then this is going to Okay, folks, we're back. So, I ended up, I got eight jars in the canner. Um, I checked my lid. I made sure that the vent was clear. You want to be able to see daylight through your vent. Um, double check to make sure that my seal was good. Made sure my pop-up was loose. So, I got the heat on now. I'm going to bring this up. Um, I've been bringing it up a little slowly i got it turned up to high now so what i'm doing is waiting for a steady stream of street a steady stream of steam wow that's hard to say try and say it three times fast folks a steady stream of steam to come out of here um, and once i get that i will set a timer for 10 minutes once that has vented for 10 minutes i will put my weight on i will bring my pressure up to 11 pounds, which is what is correct for my area and for this canner. And once it gets to 11 pounds, I'll start a timer. I'm going to have these in there for 90 minutes because they are between a pint and a quart size. And at 90 minutes, I'll turn it off and let it come down from pressure naturally. And when everything has vented and released and come down off of pressure then we'll get them out of the canner and I'll bring you back and show you what they look like okay folks welcome back I got the turkey sausage out of the canner as you can see it's still kind of bubbling and boiling everything looks beautiful you can see there's a little space at the bottom which means that turkey is going to settle down towards the bottom as it cools and we should have hopefully the perfect head space so um that is how you make turkey sausage and how you can turkey sausage. So if you, you know, are trying to make some for Thanksgiving, you can feel free to make a small batch. Like I said, I'll put the measurements down below. If you are going to make it and you want to make a big batch, you can go ahead and can some of it up and you can keep some out to use for Thanksgiving. Um, but this is a delicious turkey sausage. We are really in love with this recipe, so I hope you give it a try. Hi there folks, I just wanted to, to finish up this video by talking about the jars that I use because I'm sure there's going to be some questions from people about reusing jars. So, uh, first and foremost, most of the canning jars that I use, um, or at least 50%, I would say, are 
used jars that I bought either at estate sales or garage sales. Um, and I have had no issues with them. Um, I make sure that they are thoroughly cleaned. I check the rims to make sure there's no chips or cracks. Um, and most of them I've used multiple times. Now, the jars that I showed you today are a very special um, exception to a rule. Um, many people will ask, can you can in mayonnaise jars? Can you can in jars that spaghetti sauce comes in? Can you can in jars that, I don't know, pickled herring comes in? All glass jars are not meant to be canned in for home canning. It is a very specific type of jar that you can can in for home canning. Now, I said these jars were sold with spaghetti sauce in them. So you say, well, you just said we couldn't use jars that had spaghetti sauce in them. These are a very special exception. These were mason, made by the Mason Jar Company, Atlas Mason Jars, and these jars were sold with spaghetti sauce in them, but they are jars that are meant to be canned in. They have the right threads to hold the rings, and they are the right size to hold a regular lid or a wide mouth lid if you found wide mouth ones, which I've never seen. So these are the right thickness of glass. They are, they meet all of the specifications to be a canning jar. So, they are a special exception to the rule. You cannot can in anything typically that you buy another product in in the store. Even if a ring fits on it, that does not necessarily mean that you can can in it. These jars, which are older, that say Atlas Mason on them, to my knowledge, are the specific exception to the rule. Now, is that to say that there isn't others out there? No, there may be. Is that to say you should go and can in these? No, maybe not. This is my personal choice. I've used these before. I'm happy with them. I'm confident in them. And I will continue to use them. But I just wanted to pop on here. I wanted you folks to understand what my reasoning was behind using them. And to let you know that it is a personal choice to use used jars, to use these type of jars. If you are uncomfortable with that, go out and buy new jars by all means. I do buy new jars. It's not that I'm against it, but when I can find a good deal on jars, I'm happy to do that too. So I just wanted to make sure you guys had the full story. I was certain that there would be some questions about it, and I thought I would try and address them uh, for you right here in the video. So I hope this was helpful. Uh, I hope that this whole video was helpful. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, if you did, please like, share, subscribe, hit that bell notification button, come back and see us soon, and as always, I hope you had a great day.